Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. My name is Alex and this will be my long-term review of the Skylotech Spark. All right, the Spark is delivered in a nice little box like this. I saw you with the box. What was in the box? And let's see what's in it. An unboxing video. And right in here we have a Spark brand spanking new, still shiny. And we have instructions for use and a very thick booklet. So a lot of us are men and we don't read this stuff, but read this stuff because it tells you everything you can do with it, what, you're, what, what it's certified for and how you should use it. So that if you misuse it, it at least you're conscious about it and you can make a good decision and a good risk assessment. The spark is Almost the same as the series. If I would put them next to each other, you can hardly see a difference. The only difference is internal, and that's that the series has an anti-panic function. Sirius and Spark. One external difference is the handle colors. Black one is Sirius, gray one is Spark. There's also a Spark Tactical, that's probably black, because all the tactical stuff is tactical and black. Uh, small out external difference. We'll be talking about Spark, but almost everything you can translate to the series as well. So this is a sort of a series review as well. So let's get into the device. If I open it, want to open it up, I push down on the button in, mid, in the middle and I can slide it to the side and I can start reinserting my rope. So this, is, this device is made from uh, aluminium and all the parts that touch the rope are made from steel. So we're gonna turn around. And we get this little rope in here. So if I put the rope in, you can see that everything that touches the rope is made of steel. And I can tell you from the one that I've been using for the last months, uh, in some really rough uh, environments, it's like there is hardly anywhere on, on these parts that touch the rope. There's a little bit of paint gone here, but it looks really, really good. And from the field, from the posts I made and from the people who react to my, uh, to my stories and my posts, first of all, thank you very much. I'm very appreciative of that because that helps me create better content. If you give me your input, I can't test everything. I'm not there on the ropes all the time. So that's really good. Uh, the longevity of this, the durability is really, really good. It's one of the best out there from what I heard with regards to the durability and how long it lasts. Newer devices on the market made of aluminum, 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 they tend to wear out faster. So the Spark and the Sirius, they're certified for up to 250 uh, kilograms. Might depend on what standard you are working to, but it says 250 gauges on the, on the device itself. Read the manual. I will put the numbers on screen as well. I know from pull tests people have done that where an ID breaks at about 17 or 1800. Uh, apparently the spark is above the 2000, closer to 22, 2300 kgs when you break it on the rope. Uh, so that's one that's really cool, it's very strong. So to connect the carabiner to it, the same as normal. This is the top of the device, so I put my carabiner in from the top and then turn it around. And now you can see I can still open it like any other device, keep it attached to the harness as well. So that's one. So if I want to put in the rope, for me, the rope path is completely opposite from what I used to, what I'm used to. I learned to uh, belay and rappel with Grigoris in the, in the 1990s, in the last millennium. That's how long that certain motion has been in me when I'm threading the rope. And so I'm, I still have to think about it sometimes. It's not a bad device. I'm just too stuck in my ways to change quickly. It's a very good device. But my trick has been, if I want to load it, especially when I'm standing here and I'm gonna show it to you, it's easy because the rope is already in this position. But when you're coming in from a changeover in the harness, then everything is just sort of upside down and more cluttered. And it's sort of hard to get this to go like this sometimes. So my trick has been, I wrap it around the handle and then I go in like this. And then you close it and then the rope is set and it's good to go. So it starts at the handle and that's where the arrow is pointing to the up 
or the top or but the up is never the top the up is always the not if i'm lifting a load then it might have been that this needs to point down so up is not always up up is to the to the knot right i go around the handle and then i go go in like this and thread it around and then i can close it now to prevent you from threading the rope in the wrong way they made a very smart little design feature it's like this uh what should i call it like this cam or this uh, fin like a fish like a fin prevents you from loading the rope wrong because if i'm go like this i want to put it in i actually lock it here right i can't get it in i can but i have to really think about it i have to think about it. i want to load the rope wrong like this but i have to start at the other end and you're making errors it's pretty obvious that you're making errors er errors so what you do is if you start at the top and then you go down now i need to create space here and the only way to go there is by locking it in there and it's set another cool safety feature is if i don't lock the device properly but just halfway because of the design here the groove and that this is this is a groove and this is just a hole if i load the carabiner with my body weight the cam will clo sh uh, shut close like so all right so if inadvertently nice word you you forget to do this or it's like almost there the moment you load it it will lock so the handle is a spring-loaded handle so it always goes back this is a spark it would be similar to a rig or a taz or any other device if you open the handle you go down there's no panic function for the serious there would be a panic function similar to other devices we know but i want to talk about the spark for now if i want to open the handle i need to depress this because this is like a locking feature from the for the handle and this usually you put your palm against it and you open it it's not something it's very easy it, it it yeah it goes by by itself so like i said 250 kgs there's other devices out there that also have numbers on it but when you use them up to those loads you have to use a extra friction carabiner to redirect the rope and for this device you do not need to although i have to say i i have i had a phone call with some of the developers and the people who worked on the spark and the series and they say above like 200 220 kgs then it's might be better to might be better to put on a carabiner to create some extra friction not that it is necessary for the certification all that stuff but just to make it a little bit easier to control i have tried this up to 200 maybe not maybe 200 kilos calculating 100 and 80 kilos i've tried it up to 180 kilos and it was a really smooth ride down there's hardly any difference in in operation so that's really good if you work with uh, heavy loads the cameraman is making weird faces what <laughs> i have a really cool camera dude <laughs> i will show you Aka. i want to take Hi. a photo <laughs> yes there we go um so in the in the rescue you do not need the extra friction carabiner also cool if you use this in rescues and i would suggest you put your casualty on a serious so the, if you have a choice there are some advantages to it i will show you so the spark and the serious have a really cool feature in their design with the handle so you could do this with both devices with either the spark or the uh, the serious but they advise it to do this with the serious because that has the anti-panic function which is uh, kind of a good uh, feature for this setup so i'm ascending i'm at my casualty i will change over Take out the slack, step out of the Nina, sit down, lock the Nina, ninja. So I'm at the same, uh, same height, same level as my casualty. I'm getting ready to descend. You could use this for other things maybe as well when you need to go down with the gear or something. I'm not sure. I'm just thinking out loud here. So what I need for this 
is an extra bit of string or something that connects in a little hole of the handle. Uh, and an extra carabiner. So first I go for the extra carabiner. If I open the handle and put a carabiner through the hole in there, then the, the handle doesn't get into the lock function, which is exactly what we want. If I get a piece of string, which I have here, or a very small carabiner, I think like the DMM XSRE thing is, what you might call it, should be uh, the right size. But I know, because I just tested it, that this will fit through perfectly. So I tie a little, I don't know, stop or not, whatever you want, anything will work for this. I will rotate it a little bit, do some rope management, see what's going to happen if I put a dummy like this. And like so. Yes, I connect this to myself. Like rope management, like so. And now, if I, I'm going to make it a little bit shorter because I want the cage to, to be a little bit closer to me. I don't want to be too low, be, yeah, too low below him. So we'll do it like this. So now I have to be careful because if I pull too hard, he's going to go down. And we want to have control, so I'm not going to pull too hard. All right, so this piece of string can be anything. It does not really load bearing. Now my weight, if I descend, will pull on the handle and will make the casualty come down with me. I don't need to do anything else. I don't need to change out any... Uh, any safety gear or whatever, I can just add a piece of string. It could be my foot loop that you, that you uh, put through or anything. So now if I go down, I don't need to worry about extra friction beaners. I just go down slow and controlled and he should follow me. Now, I don't want to go too fast because if I go too fast, the thing goes into the panic function. But we do want that panic function because if I make a mistake and go too fast or onto controlled or something happens, we want this person or his casualty to stop, okay? So I will descend down, do some little bit of rope management, get this out of the way. I will descend down, all the way down, smooth to the ground. It's the easiest rescue I've ever done. Well, that's not true. That will be the crawl rescue I did with the act safe. So I'm gonna go down slow and controlled, easy does it. We're not in a rush. I'm gonna disconnect my uh, Lanyard here, that's only to position myself to the camera a little bit, just for the video. I keep descending. Ooh, that's very easy. Now if I would uh, put it in its uh, safety, uh, in a panic function, then all I have to do is get a little bit closer, maybe ascend up one step, but from the few times I've tested it, usually when it happens, you, you immediately get some extra leeway. I just go back and I can control it go down to the ground again. So that's a very, very easy way to perform a rescue, a very good feature as well. I, uh, I, really, uh, I really like this idea. Now you could use the same principle, well, because if I rig it up for a rig to lower scenario where my technician is working uh, over water and I need to get him into a boat or uh, at least the rescue is gonna be down, but my anchor points are a little bit higher than what I would like, then I can use the string and right now it's short, but this could be two or three meters, I could be below that. But I need to make sure that I have control of the tail and of the, of the rope. I've threaded both my pieces of cord through both of the little uh, little holes in the handles. And now if I just pull on this, I can, with a lot of control, lower the casualty down. And right now I have rigged it up with a Sirius and a Spark and I have the Spark on the backup because if the backup, uh, th because the Spark has no anti-panic function, you can just open the, the, open the device. And the Sirius is on the main line. Maybe it should be the other way around. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Uh, this gives me the idea that I can really open it and make the, the, the least tight rope also just run through smoothly without getting into the panic function all the time. But maybe if you turn it around, it would be better. Leave a comment. All right, so again, I just pull down very gently and both ropes are, are, are sliding down. I have control over the tail end of the rope and I can just, uh, now I went into the panic stop, so I need to go again. All right. Open the handles and we're going down smoothly, slow and controlled, it's so easy.
easy. So because of this rigging, it's not set up properly. I should have taken, well, actually not. It's perfect rigging because the dummy is on the floor and then my rope is finished. Normally you would rig ropes way longer, of course, but just for the principle, how you can use a piece of cord and a carabiner to prevent it from getting into the, the locked function, locked position and now you can use the cord to lower the casualty. If I would rig this in real life I would make, take a little bit more time to do it to make sure that these devices are oriented not where this will be hitting that one. Right now it was really on the edge and I actually had to move it a little bit at one moment. So that, that could be better. I just wanted to show you the principle how we could use this. Let's talk about some of the disadvantages of the Spark straight out of the box. I only put my carabiner in, I put it on my harness and now I want to change over from my chest ascender into descent because I need to go down. So because I'm upside down, I had some issues and troubles figuring out how to put the rope in compared to the way I do it normally. But I use my different hand than normally, my right hand, I go around the handle and then I go in and then I lock the device. So for me, that helped me get the right orientation and make it a smooth motion. Usually I do my hands the other way around. Everybody does their own way. It doesn't really matter how you do it, just as long as the rope path is correct. All right. What I had a lot of times when doing changeovers like this is that the carabiner gate slides through the holes in the spark. I have made many, many, many changeovers where I end up like this. You sit down and then you see, perfect. I will put some video footage over this so you can see how often. I've had like three or four times on video where I actually uh, have the gate cross loaded and I end up like this. That's not what we want to see. It can be an advantage that the carabiner can rotate freely when you're doing other things, but this can be a disadvantage. So you have to monitor that. Two, prevent that, I put in a captive bar. So now it cannot, cannot rotate. We readjusted the focus on the camera. So I put in a captive bar here so that the carabiner cannot rotate. But the thing is what you have to, uh, and this might be that it's this kind of captive bar. This is the one from Adorit and an Adorit carabiner. So maybe other captive bars work better, or maybe you put on a rubber little rubber ring around it. There's multiple ways to make sure that your carabiner doesn't rotate. Um, sometimes you open it and it doesn't go far enough to put the rope in, but it is because of the spark leaning onto the captive bar. So I just open it a little bit. Uh, turn the carabiner a little bit to rotate it. I, since then, no issues, I just open it easy and the rope goes in. So that's for normal use and for rescues, you do not need extra carabiners. The other feature was with a, the extra string you could put here and when lowering, the strings can be uh, a good thing, a good idea as well. Groot treffen uit. <laughs> Good, sir. So let's say I'm working on some realistic places like wind turbines or high buildings and I'm working on long ropes. One of the dangers we face there is stretching the rope that can uh, prevent our backup from functioning properly. Because if I have 100 meters of rope and I work like 10 meters above the ground, if my main line would fill with all the stretch in the rope and the time this takes to react, I'd probably hit the deck or something under, on, on the way. So to limit the fall distance, what we often use is uh, working from two descenders instead of the traditional uh, backup and descender. So the spark is really good for that as well, or the series actually. Because of the form factor of it, it looks really good next to each other and the, and the handles operate very nicely. So I will change over. Let me get out of this Harken Ninja. And back up, close the ninja. All right, so I'm, I want to descend, so I'm gonna take my other descender. All right, right-handed around the handle, through the device, close it, take out the slack, and slack is almost out. 
So now I can take my ASAP off and store that on the side. Take my hand ascender off. Store that as well. And now if I want to go down, I just orientate both devices next to each other. I keep the ropes on one side, find both handles, open them, and I can go down like this. And this is a very good, very comfortable setup. Super easy to go down. Now there's a very good argument to be made. Should you be doing this with two sparks? Or should I do this with two series or one series in there? For, to have the anti-panic function. Because normally I have a backup and a main line, and if I would misuse the device without uh, a panic function by pulling it all the way down, then the ASAP will catch me, or fuse, or whatever backup I'm using. But if I make an error now, and I keep those handles open, I'm gonna go really fast. So there's an argument to be made that you should not be doing this with sparks or series. I say your risk assessment should de decide that if you are advanced enough to work with a spark or a rig or a device without a anti-panic function, then this, in my opinion, is perfectly valid. I can go down, it's very good. I know what to do when something happens. You let go. That's it. It's easy. So if you want to support the channel, you can head over to www.patreon.com slash the rope access channel. You can become a level one patron and every time you watch a video of mine or every time I release a new video, you, pay me, you, you buy me a cup of coffee basically. So that will be well appreciated. Other ways to support the channel are definitely subscribing, get those numbers up, bigger numbers, better videos and hit that notification bell to always be notified and watch the videos the whole way through. You will really help out the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, just a few clicks. That's really good. Another way, if you don't want to become a member, the cameraman wants to say something. So I'm getting these really good tips here that if you subscribe to the channel, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me a lot. So other ways to support the channel, if you don't want to become a monthly member at Patreon or, or, or buy per video, on YouTube you can hit that super thanks and, and donate whatever you want. You can go to co slash fee.com, the Rope Access channel. Links will be in the description below. You can make a one-time donation. There's a lot of ways to support the channel. So that would be well appreciated. Like and subscribe, people. So you see, this is a very good way to go down, very comfortable, and if you want to go fast, faster than what an ASAP, I'm not supposed to say this, but if you want to do a really quick descent, because it's like 50 or 100 meters that you go down, use two of these, you don't have that ASAP that locks at two meters per second, you can really fly down and get your cup of coffee quicker. So let's uh, talk about lifting, because uh, we always use descenders as descending, but often we use them to uh, haul casualties up and down the training center, but you can also use it to lift stuff into place. They're not the best devices for lifting because there's a lot of friction. That's why you only need a little handle to go down because there's a lot of friction. You can watch the video up here to see how much friction there actually is in a series and a lot of other devices. I did not test the spark, but it will probably be similar. Um, so I'm gonna be lifting this piece of weight, two blocks of steel, 25 kilos each. They're from a counterweight. Rigged them up with a little current uh, ellipse sling and a square to make it look nice and a barrel nut straight in because maybe I need the height. Yeah, doing good. All right, so I have my rope coming down from the ground. The device up here, it says up, but like I said before in the video, up is not up, up is the piece of rope that points to the knot. And my knot is down here, that's tied directly into the squid. So I'm gonna go in from the point where it says up, and then I'm gonna go around the cam and into the other one. So if it's loaded, it's squeezed here and it's squeezed here so the rope cannot get out. I close the device and I'm set to start performing a haul. Now this is 50 kilos. I'll do some little bit of rope management. So this is 50 kilos. Probably with this device, I would have to generate 150 kilos to actually lift it 
from here. So that's not what we're going to do. We're going to make a little bit of a pulley system and we'll be using the CT Skylotech Crick for this because it's perfect for these little pulley systems. I put it on the rope. I check my rope path is clear, put it in the pulley. So right now I've actually created a three to one. Let me put it a little bit higher. Like so, I have a three to one a uh, simple mechanical advantage system created. If you want to learn more about a, a simple compound and complex, I have three very elaborate videos on that. You can check them up here and down in the bottom in the links as well. Um, so I can lower this down and now it's only, I don't know, uh, not 50, it's probably 20 kilos I have to lift, or 25 kilos I have to lift. Let's measure it with the line scale LS3. So I need to reset it, but I don't feel like doing it right now. It says uh, 6 kgs right now. So I'm going to put this on the rope with a little rope clamp I have. And it's the new Harken Ninja chest ascender. Uh, let me reset this a little bit all the way down. So now... The max force on it has been so far, max is 0.10, so we'll lift up. Slow and controlled, and then we see what the max was. So, that's pretty cool, 38 kilos. Thirty-eight kilos in a 3 to one not the most efficient pulley. But that's why, watch that video about friction, it's never as light as what we like to pretend it is. Okay, so I have my 3 to 1 system, I can lift up, you saw it fairly easy. But this direction of pull makes it, it's not, it's still heavy, so it's easier if I pull down. Now that's the good thing, we have this nice little bucket down here, or up here, and we can put in a pulley, like so. And we can use that to actually redirect the rope. Let me put it on, yeah, I'm gonna put it on this side. But I want it to be clear for you, you guys, but I will do it like this, not so clear for you guys. So we add a little pulley and now I can pull down. So this bucket is rated for 15 kN. Now I can pull down. I do have some rope friction here, but it's part of the design of the crick. And this is really easy to go like this lower down. One more thing about the rigging, I would not rig it up normally like this, but just for orientation of the device to you guys, normally I would have a carabiner and rig to that. I went straight in because I needed the space and to have the orientation so it's pointing towards you guys. So the bucket is a really cool function, there's a lot more stuff you can do with it. You can fairly easily change it over to a 5 to 1, all that stuff, but that will be different videos. So again, another good feature of that bucket. Take this one off and let's talk about lowering because if you want to lower this then again it is suggested to do a redirect carabiner at the top but it's not mandatory it's suggested so you have to decide it for yourself. Now I'm going to lower 50 kilos of weight and it's going to be really easy. I have so much control even if I open it like this. Ah! I can't hold it with one finger. I need to squeeze with a fifth fist, but I don't see why I would need a redirect carabiner. Uh, if you would use a redirect carabiner, it can be in any kind of way you want. Connect it up here and go down. But for this situation, in this case, I would not do a redirect because the weight is too light for that. I'm gonna put it down on the side here as well. Help gravity help gravity, no, let gravity help me a little bit by pushing it to the side. So in conclusion, my long-term review of the Spark is that it's become, almost become my favorite descender. I am in the luxury position that in that bag over there and in my van on the other side of the door, there's about four or five different descenders and I pick and choose wherever I want for whatever day. Sometimes I want a really, really light one and I, I get the Taz Love out. Or sometimes I want to have the old school feeling and I get my rig out. If I'm not thinking about it, I will grab this. But sometimes this handle bothers me. So that's like one of those 
little things that bother me is the handle. It sticks out so much. I have I've had it poke in my chest when I crawl in, get into tiny crawl spaces. I've had it stuck in the D-ring of the harness, shredding stuff in after getting up. I've had it uh, in the carabiner of my ASAP, same as with the, the D-ring. When I do the rat setup and I climb up like when you pull like this, uh, rats video, I made a rats video, rapid ascent, descent, ascending in your descender basically. So you pull up like this, but then your descender comes up and your Jumar is here. And then I've, I've had a lot of times happen that this, uh, the, the handle would stick in between. Well, not a lot of times, but a few times, not, not, not just once. I've had it happen a few times. So that's like one of the disadvantages is the, is the form factor. It's a little bit heavy. It's, it's rugged, it's steel. So it's heavy, but it's also part of why it's so good, right? It lasts really long. It's very durable. So the, my two minor gripes are this handle that sticks out and the cross-loading on the, on the gate is fairly easy to achieve. Other for other descenders, it's a bit harder. But with that said, it still it is one really, really one of my favorite. After about eight months of use, I can say it's really one of my favorites. It's so smooth and decent on very greasy rope, very old and dusty, like fluffy ropes that can, where, you, where it's hard to tie a knot in. I've used it with brand new ropes. I've used it like with the, uh, what is it, the Ultima from Courant. It's a very supple rope. It's really good. The playing around with rescues and rescue loads and all that stuff. It's so smooth, it's so easy. I did part of my reassessment with the Spark and at that moment I was really focused on the Megawatt by Adorit. So the Spark was on my harness as a second descender, but every time I, I got that on and I did not have to put on an extra fixture carabiner during the rescue. Yeah, it makes, makes life really easy. So all in all, a very good descender. If you're in the market for a descender and you have to choose, if I would choose, oh, for me it would be a hard choice because I am, I've been working with a rig since they got first released. So I'm very used to that and I like the handle flipping back. But it's, very, it's a tie. I would call it a tie between the two. It's, it's, it's my, this is, I love it. It's a very, very, very good descender. Now, before you think, yeah, but weren't you at for Skylotech at Green Day and working and collaborating with them? Yes, you are correct. I have been collaborating with Skylotech. They've been helping me get to Grim Day and provide me a lot of support getting to Grim Day. They helped me get to the ANA fair for one day, so that was really cool as well. They gave me two sparks to play around with, so that's really cool as well. Um, I got on a phone call, we had conversations about the development of this device and the do's and don'ts and all the little trips and hacks. I put everything in the video. So. Yes, we collaborated on this. I do not stand, I, I don't gain anything by saying that this is a good descender when it's crap. It's not crap, it, I think it's a good descender. So take that with you in account. My personal opinion, my belief is that this is one of the best descenders out there and one of the most durable, if not the most durable. Maybe there's another one, uh, might be, but it's, uh, it's up there with one of the best descenders in there. Also. I haven't mentioned it yet, but it doesn't twist the rope, or at least not as much as all the other descenders out there. Because of the rope path, it's so straight through, you don't get all those tangles when you do a lot of drops on the same rope where there's like 10 meters of rope on the ground and then all the twists with this hardly happens. All right, people, that's it for my long-term review of the Skylotech Spark. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment on what you think of the Spark or the series, what your thoughts on, on them are, and maybe if you want to have me review more descenders, climbing gear, ascenders, anything you want, leave a comment in the description and I'll see if I can get to work on that. Thank you for watching, I will see you in the next one. Stay connected!